Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I've started uh, about prosperity series. So I'm going to continue with the third part. Uh, the third part of prosperity series. And I think last week I spoke about the fact that God has already blessed us and he wants us to do well. It is his heart desire. Okay? So I talk about double blessing. Okay? How God has already, you know, um, to bless us. We are already blessed. Okay? So today I'm going to talk about the same month of May, which is prosperity series. A man of grace for double blessings but the topic i'm going to talk about the third part which is going to be a life of giving and sowing a life of giving or a life of sowing beloved everything in life proves like to the fact that god gave us everything for free water is free it's human beings that sometimes we turn it around. Air that we breathe in is free. Livestock we see, they were there. Even you go to the deep forest, there are animals there. So people begin, it's today that people begin to, you know, um, raise them and then sell them. So you look at everything in life we're giving to us for free. But God wants us to reproduce, replenish, bring an increase. So we are serving a God who is a God, who is a God who gives. He's a giver. So until you and I, we're going to see this principle. We can apply this same principle in every area of our life. For somebody to become a millionaire, he has to serve, he has to give. He has to give, sell a product. McDonald's has to produce something. They have to give, then they receive. So it's a principle in life. So I'm going to, I only took, there are so much scriptures, but I only did three points. So I'm continuing with prosperity series that we have been blessed by God. And everybody that is blessed in life. You see, when you're born, you brought nothing. When you hit 100 years old, 120 years old, 110 years old, 95 years old, and you die and go to heaven, you take nothing. So life is a giver. Okay? Life is a giver. So if we know how to give, then we become prosperous. How to give to the needy, how to give to, uh, you know, to everyone. If we know how to give, then we become prosperous. So I'm just going to glance through it quickly so that we learn that in life, now I'm sharing something I'm giving. Okay? I've learned from God. I've learned from the scriptures, the Bible. I'm also giving it will help somebody one way or the other one day somebody might be in need they'll come into contact with this video and it might help them so i'm going to go through it so i'm speaking about a life of giving i'm doing prosperity series for this month a life of giving or a life of sowing genesis chapter one so the first point that i'm talking about is that god created everything and give it to man for free the uh, the livestock we will need to use it to you know for food the plants the vegetables the everything we need already was there God created everything and gave it to us for free give it to you and I for free so for us to be for, for us to experience abundance, 
we must also learn how to what? Give. Give to our children, give to, uh, you know, we talk about giving, you have to be wise. It's not about giving to somebody who wants your downfall. No, you give to a needy person, somebody that will put them on your hand, okay? Orphanage, you know, you give to for a cause, a good cause. That's how people in America, they give. Don't just give it to anybody or don't let anybody, people are manipulators. There are men of God who are manipulators. There are friends who are manipulators. People are manipulators in life. So you only give when God speaks to you or when you are led, okay? And normally give it to where you think it's really going to benefit. It's going to touch the heart of God. It's going to, you know, it's going to bring a kind of reaction to humanity whereby you give and it touches, you know, nature will find it and then that thing will give, will be given back to you. I was trying to put Galatians 6, 7, I forgot it. He said, whatsoever thing that we want, we sow, we reap it back. Okay. So now, God created everything and gave it to man for free. God is a giver. That's the first point. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28. And God said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness let them have dominion over the fish the sea over the fowl of the air over the cattle over the over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth so god created everything and gave it to man for free verse 27 so god created man in his own image in the image of god he God, God created he, him. The male and the female created in them. So what I want to say is that you can be prosperous when you're a woman. You can be prosperous when you're a man. Even though we all know that normally God wants a man to be the head in the family. But you can be, any one of you, any one of us can be prosperous. It doesn't matter. A woman can be rich. Today we can see there are women CEOs and all that. You can be prosperous. The only thing is we should follow the guidelines, what God already has what has designed, put it around that. If we all follow, you become prosperous. You become successful. If you follow, we become successful, prosperous. Okay, so verse 28, and God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. So in life, for you to be successful and millionaire, you have to understand the principle of fruitfulness. You have to be able to use your gift or talent or anything or product or services to multiply, you know? You have to be able to multiply. Whatever you're giving, you give out, it goes and come back to you. You give services, okay? I have a transportation service. When I give services, I get money back. So that is the principles in life. Okay, beloved, that every one of, of us must understand. Many people think, I need to take, take, take. No. When you take, some of them is that we take and you pay your bills. Sometimes, thank God, even for God giving you the strength or you using your wisdom to have money to pay your bills. Sometimes when you, sometimes when I finish paying all my bills, sending something for my children and everything i thank god for that so it's a principle of giving or sowing and then you receive that's the principle okay genesis chapter 22 so god told them that subdue okay verse 28 genesis 1 verse 28 and god blessed them and god said unto them be fruitful and multiply replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. So everything has been given to us. Prosperity, we already have it. The only thing is that find it and then have that mindset that you are never poor. You have it. You have it around us. There are gold around us. There are diamonds. God wants us to understand that principle of what? Of giving or sowing. And we get back. We sow services. We sow ideas. We come up with a product. You see, 
Elon Musk and Microsoft, you know, and all these uh, billionaires, they are giving services. Facebook, you know, Zuckerberg, all of them, they are giving services. And they are investing and they are getting money back. So it's simple. Every one of us, it doesn't matter where you come from, poor family, whatever. When you follow these principles, God will give you abundance. You realize that you're going to find out that everything you are doing is going on, is prospering. So it's a principle of giving. You must be doing something. You must be giving. It could be writing some. Give it. You know, and in life, you have to give until a certain time that you become popular. People know you. Then your giving begin to pay you back. That's how life is. Okay? So I love doing so many things. Okay? So Genesis chapter 22, because God is a God who promises and he's a giver. God gives, us, gives it back to us. Genesis 22 verse 16 to 17. God tested Abraham. Okay? And God said, by myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son. Abraham was willing to give. Abraham was, it was a test, okay? You have not, I will, I will talk about it again. Your only son, I will surely bless you and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven. Even God understands the principle of what? Multi, mu multiplicity. I'm trying to bring the word. You see, in life, everything that you do must multiply. That's why a man and a woman meet, baby comes, okay? We give back to our children, okay? Multiplicity. Every day, it could be a service. It could be a talent. You need to do something to be able to multiply the gifts. Because God even told them, okay? God said, Abraham, if you don't multiply yourself, I will multiply you. Because it's something that I've already said it. It could be writing songs, learning instrument, uh, you know, going to school, finishing, being a doctor, a nurse, being what, uh, you know, a, a CEO, you know, a company owner, a driver. It could be anything. But God wants you to what? Reproduce. A lot of time we are waiting for one billion to fall from heaven upon us. No. The money already is with us. It's in our mindset. Just believe that you're already blessed. Okay? So God told Abraham, he said, Abraham, you're already blessed. But I want to let you know that I created the blessing. All the blessings are for me. So I'm going to show you. Can you give me Isaac? Abraham passed the test. And since that time till today, Abraham's descendants are blessed. And because of Jesus, you and I, and our children, you know, we are part of it. If we are Christian, if we are confessed Christ, we are part of this promise, okay? So God is also telling us he's going to bless us. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 19 proves that God is a giver. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 19 says, As for every man to whom God has given riches and wealth and given him power to eat of it, to receive his heritage and rejoice in his labor. This is the gift of God. God wants even the jobs we are doing, he wants you to enjoy in it. God wants you to enjoy. Enjoy your children. Enjoy your marriage. Enjoy everything you have need to enjoy it. Okay? So that's why Ecclesiastes is trying to tell us that every man God has given us riches, wealth, honor. Okay? God has given us riches, wealth, and honor. He repeated again in Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 2. A man to whom God has given riches and wealth and honor so that he lacks nothing for himself of all he desires. So everything you desire, God can make it. God has caused you. He has blessed us already. It's around us. It's our mindset. It's at, we, we begin something. Start something. Begin something. You begin. You're going to... You, you, you're going to find out that now your services, okay? Like right now, I just started also for Frank TV, another channel. Right now, I have nobody following me, but that's how I do my things, okay? But I know I'm giving. I'm giving. I'm giving. People are watching. I'm giving. I'm giving. The time will come, you see, people will now come to follow me. That's why there are many people online. 
many men of God that millions are following them because they are always servicing and giving. That is prosperity. A time will come, these people will give back to you. Okay? So God proves to us that He's a God who has, who has given us everything freely. He's giving you and I everything freely. Just that we don't have to be lazy. Just that we need to get up and know how to create services, create product, do something that can be a blessing. The money is already in you. Okay? It's in your mind. The money, you are already blessed. So sometimes when I'm confessing certain things, people think you're oh, so far, you are so you are you are too proud. You don't have money, but you're pretending like you have money. Yes. I don't have the money now, but when I speak it, when I believe it, when I say it, and I take an action, then God makes it come. Okay? Yes, of course. I believe one day maybe God, God, God has blessed me already in the spirit. One day, what is left is for it to actually what? To, 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 I mean, um, to actually, you know, uh, come out, you know, show for, for money to show in your account. You see, Christianity sometimes also pray and say, God, I need real cash. And then when you need a cash, God will give you ideas. God will say, do this. God will say, uh, pray for uh, 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 increment or increase in your, in, 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 in your, uh, at your job place. They're going to give you, they're going to push you for a position. So you have to ask. You have to do it. You have to believe it. You have to, that's, that's prosperity. That's how you become blessed. God has already blessed us. So he's waiting that you and I will what? Will continue to what? God told Abraham, he said, I will multiply you. But God had already told, uh, you know, Adam and Eve, that I want you to multiply because I've already, you know, done it. So number two is that men must also give to have abundance in life. God is a giver. So we also must give in service. We must give in, in monetary terms, we must give to support the orphanage, especially there are places that when you give, it touches the heart of God. People who have no uh, fathers and mother, mothers, orphanages, okay? The widows and all those kind of you know, people who are in need. You go to Africa, there's a lot, even here, okay? So these are the very things that touches the heart of God. So God is a giver. So he wants you and I also to give. You know the problem. Sometimes my children used to tell me that you're always dressing. I said, I want to dress more than you see me. I want to really enjoy life. Let me tell you, life it's about God. You know, God allowed our mothers in uh, Psalm 139. Psalm 139 is 139. David talks about how we were framed in our mother's womb. God allowed us to come to demonstrate who He is. To live a life that will become a blessing until we hit 100 years so that your life will make impact so that our children will continue what we have done. That's all about life. Life is about giving. So what are you giving? Many of us think, I want to receive, receive, you know, even money. Okay, even money, sometimes you don't spend some, <laughs> you know, you're going to lose it. Sometimes spend money on yourself. Spend some money on your children. Spend money in the work of God. Spend money on the, uh, you know, on the needy. Okay? If you don't spend sometimes you lose it. Somebody come and take So that's how God has made it. You see? So a life of what? Prosperity and abundance. It's already God has made it around us. But those who are smart, they are the ones who are really making it, okay? So men must also give to have abundance in life. That's the second point. I'm talking about only three points, okay, for this prosperity series. First Kings chapter 3, verse 1 to 12. I don't have to go there, okay? I only wrote that about the encounter that with God. When Solomon gave thousands of sheep, Solomon gave a lot. And the moment Solomon gave... That is where we are not just saying that going through money anyway. Take care of your children, your home, your family, your mother, father, take care first. But you see, when Solomon gave so much in First Kings chapter 3, God decided to bless Solomon more than anybody. God tested Solomon. So, what do you want me to do for you? And Solomon said, Give me wisdom. God said, Wow, you pass it. You are passed this examination. 
You didn't ask for your enemies. You didn't have for money, but now I'm going to give it to you. Okay. So life is a life of giving. A life of it. It could be service. Learn something and let somebody enjoy it. You could give advice. You could. So sometimes I don't understand why many Christians we fight among ourselves, whereas we can give. It's a life of giving. A life of sowing. Sow something in life. If you know how to design, I always tell my the guy who worked for me. If you know how to do this, do it and get money out of it. You know how to record, you know, do it and if you can make money out of it, put yourself online, okay? Like my 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 <laughs> my friend who has taught me how to, you know, uh, how to record songs and all that, okay? Yeah, he taught me. But if it's free, I might not be serious. But he taught me because he also would learn it and paid money. So he taught me and I'm so happy, okay? I invested in it. And now I can do something. I'm not the best, but I can do something. So life is about giving. When we give, we receive. Okay? There are some rich men. Maybe they're going to find out that, oh, nobody clean or takes the trash around the neighborhood. They come up with an idea, go to the bank. And now they have what? They have all these uh, uh, trucks that, you know, pick up trash. You know, all these uh, dumpsters, the big trucks. Because they are seven, the government begins to pay them. Private companies begin to pay them. Then, because they are giving, they are seven, taking the trash that the place doesn't, uh, you know, get, you know, doesn't stink or, you know, it, it, it doesn't mess up the neighborhood. Because they are giving, they will be paid back, okay? And now they become wealthy. So life is not like you just sit down and money comes from heaven. The money is around us. It's about service. It's about the job you're doing. Do it the best. Be the best at your job place. Okay? So let me rush because I need to bring it so soon. I don't want to beat the time. Okay? So men must also give to have abundance in life. We must be like God. God is giving every day. So we must also give in service. It could be any way. Okay? First Kings 3, 12. And now, Solomon gives so much. And God says, Solomon, what do you want? And Solomon said, give me wisdom to take care of your people. God said, you pass it. And God swore that, Solomon, I'm going to bless you that nobody will supersede or surpass your blessing. Nobody can overtake you. And since Solomon's wealth was known when Solomon was alive till today, that he's dead and gone to heaven, Nobody is richer than Solomon. Solomon's world, nobody has passed because God gave a decree. Okay, nobody has been able to, you know, build about 50 billion, I mean, golden temple. Okay, <laughs> nobody, nobody has done it. Today we say about trillion dollars. Solomon used it to build one temple. Okay, nobody can do it. No individual person. Okay. So that's how it is. And God bless Solomon. Luke chapter 6 verse 38 says, Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over will men put into your lap or your bosom. For with the same measure you use, it will be measured back to you. So life is a life of sowing. Life is a life of giving. And once you sow, you put a corn, you're going to get more. You put, a, you know, you you put an apple. You're gonna get more. It's 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 there. Nature, you know, any natural thing they they're able to what reproduce is only human beings. Sometimes we are worried. Okay, so we give it, the Bible said that it shall be given back to us. Abraham and Jacob paid tight for what God had promised and also what God did. So Jacob said, God, if you do this for me, I'll pay one tenth. Okay, in Genesis chapter fourteen. In Genesis 22, Abraham also passed the test. And because of that, God bless him. Okay? We are also, you and I, every day we are going through the same test. Can we give? Can we serve? Can we can we help? When you talk about service, it's not only in your church. Sometimes the men of God are not really, you know, they are not really opening their minds where many, many of the fathers do very well. But it's not about only sitting only in your church. When we talk about giving, or so it is broad. You can do it to your family, children, anybody. I mean, don't give it to somebody who doesn't appreciate or don't waste your giving on 
people who will not take you anywhere. Trust me. Give it to the needy people. Places that will touch the heart of God so that once you give, you can receive it back. Is somebody hearing me? Okay. So Abraham passed. Uh, Jacob also said, God, if you help me and then overcome my brother does not attack me, this I will pay one thing. Romans chapter 11, verse 35 to 36. Look at this, okay? Romans chapter 11, verse 35 to 36 says, Who has ever given first to God and will not be paid back? Or God will not repay it to that person. For of him in the person of Christ and through him, Jesus Christ, and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. So everything that we have been given away, we're going to receive your one million, one trillion, everything you are happy, everything that you're going to get, it's out of it's a reproduction, out of God has already put it in us. It's an idea, write a book and people become wealthy. Somebody get a song and is able to bring it up there, it hits, it becomes wealthy. So it's just the blessing are just around you and me, okay? Zachariah chapter 9 verse 12. Zachariah said, you know, when they were building back the day, so Zachariah said, return, and Ezra, he said, return to your stronghold, okay? Oh, sorry. And I'm, not, I'm going to quote Nehemiah. This is Zachariah. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I'll declare that I will restore to you double. You see, we have hope, but we are prisoners. We have been blessed, but we don't know how to what, bring that blessing out. Okay? So God is saying that Zachariah, okay, Proverbs 28, verse 25. A greedy man steps, stares up strife. That's what a lot of a lot of children of God do, a lot of men of God do. They don't want they don't want anybody to go anywhere so they say stay here i don't want you to be blessed so that you 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 you, you don't expand the kingdom okay many people are afraid because they're greedy but life is giving okay he says he says what he says what proverbs 28 28 verse 25 the greedy man steps stares up strife but the one who trusts in the lord will be enriched nehemiah chapter 2 verse 20 then I replied to them. That was what I was trying to quote. Nehemiah 2.20. Then I replied to them. God of heaven will make us prosper. And we his servants will arise and build. But you have no portion or right or claim in Jerusalem. Okay. So it's God who helps you and I to build again. It's God who blesses you. Anything you are doing God is in it. There is a blessing. Trust me. He has already blessed you. Deuteronomy Psalm 20 verse 4. May God, he says, may he, may God grant you your heart desire and fulfill all your plans. So I'm talking about the third part, which is, you know, the third part, which is a just God with sabbatical blessings and promises, the third part. So I've already quoted the, the third part, a just God with sabbatical or sabbat blessings and promises. Exodus chapter 23, verse 25 to 26. The Bible says that so you shall serve the Lord your God and he will bless your bread and your water. And I will take sicknesses away from your midst, okay? Midst of you. No one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days, you see? So when, when we understand the nature of God, we also give. God doesn't allow for barrenness. God, God doesn't allow so many things. But it is us, fear. We are afraid. We can move. Somebody is intimidating you, so you are stuck. No, because of fear, okay? Um, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 16. The Bible says that if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, then I command you today by loving the Lord your God. Love God. Learn how to love God. By walking in his ways and by keeping his commandments and his statutes and his rules, then you shall live and multiply. And the Lord God will bless you in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. There are so much blessings waiting for you and I, beloved. Psalm 112, verse 1 and 3, and I'll bring it to close. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delight in his commandments. His offspring will be mighty in the land. 
the generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in his house and his righteousness endures forever. So beloved, I'm bringing it to an end here that God is a God who gives. Man, you and I, as the children, we must also give. And we must also understand that God has promises about giving. And Sabbath means God wants to give you rest and give me rest. By now, money will be working for you and I. And I decree that for your life and for my life. In Jesus' mighty name. So I'll bring the fourth part, which will be the end of, you know, getting to the end of this man. Or I might have one or two. So I want you to, once you watch it, I want you to watch it again. It's very, very profound and very powerful. May the Lord richly bless you. Bye-bye. I love you with the love of the Lord. You are already blessed. The Bible says that as a man or a woman thinks, so is he. Think riches. Think that you are already blessed by God. Amen and amen. Bye-bye.